Hello and welcome back, everybody. This is the DanJohnUniversity.com podcast. This is episode 149. And thank you for being here. <clears throat> Remember, if you have questions, email them to me uh, at podcast at DanJohnUniversity.com. Thank you. I'm happy to answer each and every question. And I sure appreciate the, the people who have sent in questions because that keeps this podcast alive and going. So let's get started today. Uh, we have a lot of questions today, and and not all of them will I have really great answers to, but I'll do my best uh, as I can. Uh, sometimes the really hyper-specific questions are the most difficult. So here we go. We have a question from Jacob. Jacob says this, I'm a water polo player. Uh, sadly, I played water polo until my horse drowned. But boom, boom. I'm trying to make a strength program. Any recommendations? Well, um, the, the problem with a sport like water polo, and actually it goes on to say it right now, water polo has a lot of wrestling, throwing, swimming, and treading water. The act of treading we call egg beater is a unique movement, so finding exercises that support it to be really hard. Um, at best, uh, when we move over to the areas like swimming, water polo, uh, and the rest, uh, I, one of my students, uh, Jack, I think still is the UK strength and conditioning uh, uh, diving coach. Um, <clears throat> it's it's a tough thing. Uh, water is a tough environment. Uh, efficiency is uh, the name of the game uh, for us humans trying to do things better in, in the water. Uh I do like what you said here about the throwing and wrestling aspects. So dry land training is always an issue. I mean, how, how much carryover is that? It's like in the world of, uh, uh, like, uh, the winter Olympics, the speed skaters, dry land training is extremely important, but they will tell you that there is that weird carryover or lack of carryover from all that hard work they did. So first let's just say this <laughs> out loud, proudly that, there, there is a chance that all this stuff we're talking about might not carry over, and I apologize. Uh, if I was to work with a big, a younger group of, of volleyball players, our dry land training would include probably a lot of medicine ball work. Um, the I would probably use the four to six pound Dynamax balls. We would probably do a lot of training like a javelin thrower, a lot of various throws in various directions, uh, various intensities. Um, go online, look up medicine balls. <laughs> uh, the, the Dynamax company has a, had a really great PDF on their site. Uh, I, I hope they still do that had just a, a, a lot of exercises. And, and I think that would be a good start. Frankly, <clears throat> as we move up, I would obviously say, you know, you need to do push, pull, hinge, squat, loaded carry, because I can't help myself. That's what I think everyone should do. But I do think there would be value as appropriate in doing the basics of the Olympic lifts. I, I would think perhaps a, a hang power snatch, a hang power curl would be very valuable. Now, uh, ballistic work overhead, probably not so much. And I only concern with that because you're asking this athlete to do so many things with the shoulder. Um, interesting, uh, my friends who were swimmers growing up, didn't nearly have this, the, the shoulder injuries that the rest of us who played American football and were throwers did. But uh, I think I think you can only ask so much uh, of a joint, so doing ballistic overhead work might not be there. But if you've done the, the basics, if you've taken care of the medicine ball work, if you've taken care of the fundamental weightlifting movements, the push-pull, uh, uh, sliding up to the Olympic lifts as you go through might have some value. As for this thing about the training yourself for treading water, uh, the egg beater, uh, that is hyper specific. I know someone's going to write in the comments. I, I, I got someone attacked me online because I made fun of the innie and outie machines. But uh, there's not going to be a lot of carryover, in, in, I think, in, in, from the weight room into that specific m movement. I do think that squats and hinges would build up the engine for them. And so I hope that helps. I hope that helps. All right. Thank you. We have a question from Clay. Clay says, I have a very physical job in construction, and oftentimes it's hard to balance a training program and recovery time. 
I just turned 41 and I'm looking for a balance with my kettlebell training and preventing injury. Any suggestions on mobility, injury prevention, high reps and sets with recovery in mind? Clay, I feel like I should just say, why don't you read one of my books? Uh, Intervention was written for you. Um, But uh, basically, I think a combination of original strength, Tim Anderson's work. If you're on uh, DJU, you can find it in our downloads, uh, his book, Pressing Reset. Or just look up Tim Anderson, Original Strength. Um, There might even be a a, a licensed practitioner in your area to help you with that. But uh, Tim's videos are are amazing uh, on his site and on his YouTube channel. Um, But Original Strength is what I recommend for mobility um, and and injury prevention now. Yeah, Uh, uh, With an Olympic lifting meet I had a couple of years ago, Tim gave me a little template of movements that I would mix in with my snatches and clean and jerks. And I, I felt, I felt tremendous, even though I had obvious, uh, you know, issues because of my age and my, uh, uh, athletic career, uh, in the areas of what you should do with the kettlebells. Um, I would suggest there's an exercise called the half kneeling press. I'm a big fan of that for people who want injury prevention it's it's one knee down and it doesn't really matter which hand you press with you could also do double uh and the idea on the reason i like that is it requires you to really stretch the hip flexor really have the pelvic bowl under control and have the upper body on control obviously i'm going to recommend hangs for you because i think hangs are great for uh anybody <laughs> who's uh i don't know older than 20, uh, who does anything that relates to the shoulders. So half kneeling press and, and hangs might be two of the best things you can do for, and again, injury prevention. I like it when I see the term, I know what it means, but frankly, you know, if a great white shark bites you, it's tough. Or you get T-boned in a car, or if you even get rear ended, you know, that some, there are, there are forces that we deal with that There is no magic, you know, exercise to prevent those kinds of things. I guess the great white shark was over the top. Um, The goblet squat by itself might be a really great exercise. And remember, I would start thinking more like we teach it at the gym here. We're doing longer and longer pauses at the bottom. And then it comes, uh, and now it's time to talk about the more ballistic stuff like the swings and snatches and cleans. Um, I would ramp those down uh, just for a while while maybe you start to, if you're, if you're, if you're struggling with uh, balance right now, the half kneeling presses, the hangs and the goblet squats uh, are going to be restorative. Will uh, you know, they'll, they're going to, they're going to have some hypertrophy. You're going to feel better when you do them. So there's some value there. With the swings and cleans and snatches, if your technique isn't spot on, you're kind of adding to the problem. Uh, if you know any of the Turkish get-up movements or the partial movements of the Turkish get-up, um, they, they might have great value for you, okay? Um, reps and sets, uh, I would say with the standard Delorme numbers, you know, 15 to 30 total reps, three sets of eight, five sets of five. Uh, people have listened to my podcast before probably going, I could have told you that answer, but it's true. Uh, I would like you to have someone look at your swing, clean, and snatch technique before you really start pushing those numbers up. Because if you are in a construction job, you're getting a lot of that movement. And if you have any um, issues, any hitches with your with your ballistic kettlebell movements, I, I really just think it's going to set you up for some injury, uh, not for some injuries, some issues. Okay. Thank you, Clay. Good question. We have a question from Orlando. You keep mentioning Clarence Bass on the podcast. And after a few Google searches, I found articles about him by him. And what I would suggest, okay, well, this is interesting. I want to learn more about his philosophy. Okay. So Orlando, now that you found those articles, what I would suggest is that you read those articles. I know this is 20, it's the 2020s and people don't read anymore, but you'll get a lot of information by reading those articles. 
Okay, that was snarky. I know that, but I, I honestly feel like that's something I have to say nowadays. Uh, can you share your favorite books by him and any other tidbits worth knowing about his training philosophy? Yeah, my two favorite books uh, of him. Uh, in fact, I emailed Clarence to thank him. I personally liked Ripped Three the best of his early books. Um, the the three Rip books are fascinating. It's interesting because he writes the first Rip book in 79 when he's in his 40s, and he's still knocking out good material every month now. He wrote that in 1979, and he's still knocking out good books. He was over 40 and still writing. Now, that's impressive. Um, ripped one, ripped two uh, are honest, candid books. Uh, but rip three I like because it just goes through and explores in great depths. Uh, I think it's called the recipes, the routines, and the programs or something like that. Uh, and the other book I like a lot is Challenge Yourself. Uh, I I think it's the best of his later books. So you have the rip series, the first three, and I, I like rip three. Lean for a lot. Uh, the lean, uh, the, the questions book. Uh, Oh, the Lean Advantage series. I'm sorry. The Lean Advantage series. That's one through three of the questions. I, I like it. It's 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 him answering questions, a lot of research there. Um, Lean for Life summarizes them. And then, of course, there's the Challenge Yourself and his later books. But my favorite one is Challenge Yourself. Uh, his workout C is where he does squat snatches. And then he goes to this local park for his walk. And there's a park horse on his walk and that's, and he does dips, chins and push ups uh, while doing his walk. And I, I, I think that's a great template for life. I mean, squat snatch, go for a walk, you know, walk for a while, do some push ups, walk for a while, do some pull ups, walk for a while, do some dips, walk for a while, do some push ups. I mean, I think there's a real value to that. Uh, so that's, those are my recommendations. Uh, when you order the books, if you wouldn't mind, Orlando, uh, uh, Give him a little thank you and a note that uh, uh, I'm a big fan and I'd appreciate that. Uh, the thing I do like about ordering from his website is I can pl uh, pay with PayPal. And I'm not encouraging PayPal, but what's nice is it's, it's for me, it's a lot simpler uh, to do that. And I also know that the, the author is getting reimbursed. Uh, there is a major company named after a river uh, where my books get sold on and I I mean, I might as well just give them away for free almost. But I thank you. Uh, good question. Um, tidbits about his training. My favorite one, uh, you know, is really if you're on a fat loss journey, uh, take your time. Uh, decades. If you're, if, if you're, the old joke, if you wake up fat, you know, what would you do? Uh, that's a question that comes up a lot. Um, I have several answers for it, but. To be honest, the best one you could do if, if you woke up, yeah, I don't know, 300 pounds one day, that's the standard question. What would you do? Uh, Clarence's answer would be, well, for, well, my answer is always, I, you might want to go see a doctor. Um, but if, if you need to lose 120 pounds, uh, if you need to lose, you know, 50, 55 kilos, uh, if you, if you do it in, in a couple of weeks, you'll probably end up at bouncing back up to 320. So I'm to the point where mentally I'm thinking a pound a month, which is nightmarish for someone who, whose brain works like mine. But it seems to be, and I've picked up on this with my own journey, is that, and I've learned this from Clarence, is that the more time you take losing fat, the less your body panics. One of my favorite stories in his book, they asked him out of kind of nowhere to, to do a photo shoot. He had, say, three weeks. So he looked at his, you know, he got water weighed, got his body fat, figured out what he needed to do. And so I think what he did, and, I, and I'm just, just come from memory, he cut back on one piece of bread every day and added 15 minutes to his walk. I mean, that's genius. And, and within three weeks, his body fat numbers were where they needed to be. Uh, that story uh, really inspired me to rethink a lot of things in, in my own coaching and training. Um, to be so locked in on your nutrition that you figure out that it's only one piece of bread is, 
is illuminating. The other thing, and this is becoming clearer and clearer, and you'll see this more and more, Orlando, in the next, oh, I don't know, 20 years or so for sure, but uh, uh, you'll notice a lot of the fitness influencers will end up having a story a couple of years from now. How I, you know, put on all this weight now, how I, her, her, you know, heroically lost it and then I put it back on and I heroically lost it. And a guy like Clarence Bass would say, well, why don't you just, you know, lose the weight and maintain? But that's a very, very unusual. It's a very logical thing to say, but you don't hear a lot about it. Thank you, Orlando. Good question and, and give Clarence my best. We have a question from Daniel here. You've often talked about the importance of snapacity when it comes to performance. Do you consider snapacity to be important in terms of movement health as well? If so, what would you say the minimum effective dose of this kind of training be in the context of easy strength or on a uh, three-day week, three times eight bodybuilding routine? For context, I'm 44 and I've been lifting for 30 years, but I am interested in your point of view on how this changes throughout a person's life. Okay, so snapacity is a term I invented. Snap work capacity, shove them into one word, snapacity. It's the ability to boom, 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 boom a lot of times. Um, if you play American football or rugby, you need to collide with the opponent hard over and over and over again. If you're a thrower, you've got to hit the implement hard over and over and over. And that is what I call snapacity. If you're, uh, if you're an NBA player, well, maybe not anymore because of the three-point shooting, but who needs to do a lot of dunks and blocks, uh, you need to be able to jump up high and hard over and over and over and over again in a very long season. In terms of movement health, well, it, it, it is different, but remember, the thing that, Daniel, the thing that builds work capacity, you know, kind of for the rest of us, the general population, is the loaded carries in my humble opinion, the prowlers, the sleds, the lower carries, uh, lower care, loaded carries, that would be like farmer walk, suitcase carries, uh, sandbag carries, and, and all the rest of the stuff I talk about. Read my articles, read my articles, buy my books. Uh, so I, yeah, so I think there's real value in having um, uh, snapacity. But it's a different kind of snap ass. It's it's a it's it's a being able to move a couch kind of thing. I think it's perfectly okay if you're a normal person and you help your friend move on a Saturday and you find yourself extremely sore uh, on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. I think that's fine. Uh, the idea though is that you showed up and you help your friend and you moved all you know you emptied their. The, my friends always seem to live on fourth floor apartments. And the elevator never works when they ask me to help them do something. So if you're, you know, if I'm helping you move your whole house, and of course you bought four freezers and you got, you know, because, you know, you, you know, you're on this special diet or whatever. And I have to lug those freezers and refrigerators and couches up and down a stairwell on a Saturday and I'm sore. That's okay. All right. At least I could help for that day. That's, that to me is what, I'm looking for in the area of snapacity for normal people. If something terrible does happen at three in the morning and the, the fire alarm goes off and you leap out of bed and you, uh, you go get your children, you say, you know, you, you get what's, you know, you, you get your kids out of the house, you get your family out of the house. That's what snapacity is in normal life. Uh, to be able to, to, to be effective, take care of business. Now, obviously, you know, if it's a snowy uh, morning and your your feet get cold, well, your feet get cold, but your family's safe and life is good. I hope that makes sense to you. I, I, I know this is a different way of looking at it, but uh, your job at um, uh, what did you say? I'm sorry, did you say 44? Is to to be a, the healthiest, strongest, uh, most mobile 44 you can be, and with with a lot of wiggle room to deal with life's little issues. Uh, I want you to look good, move good, feel good, but also be able to move couches and also be able to rally up when something happens. To me, that's what snapacity is for an adult. Thank you. That was a fun question. Thank you. We have a question from Andrew. I'm 33, serve as an infantry officer, 
and used to do weightlifting meets before joining the Army, and I've always had a profound love for the sport. I want to compete again, and have been following the easy strength for Olympic lifting on uh, Dan John University, DJU, and I've enjoyed watching the form come back. Andrew, that makes me very happy. It really does. That program is pretty good. I mean, it um, it's not bad at all. Um, I've been doing carries and sled pulls each day, and my legs have felt great, as the first two weeks have no extra squatting. I know the next two weeks have some front squats added in. Historically, weightlifters are always pushing for higher squat numbers and perform heavy pulls. Do you feel that progress can be made without tons of extra squats and pulls by substituting these with some sled and carry work along with more focus on the lifts? Andrew, I believe that exactly. Um, it's as I, as I, as the other day I discovered that uh, I found out that Isaac Berger, the great American Olympic lifter had passed away, but I'm thinking about guys like Ike Berger, uh, Tony Garcia, Bob Minarski, um, in the great American weightlifting tradition, uh, Tommy Kono did this also, Andrew, is they had three lifts, the clean, uh, the press, the snatch, and the clean and jerk. The press, snatch, jerk. And those, <laughs> that generation, three days a week, would go into the weight room, press, snatch, and jerk. If they felt good, they would do front squats. I just summarized the great tradition. Americans went away from that tradition uh, because we started listening to some literally invented nonsense from an Eastern country, literally just made up. And we threw away uh, our all, all, all of our great tradition of Olympic lifting and started doing, uh, I remember I had a guy show me a program one time where I think it, it, I would, if I said he had 30 different movements a week to do as an Olympic lifter, I don't think I'm exaggerating. And this is one that was just the snatch and clean and jerk. Oh, he had mid thigh, you know, power snatches followed by hanging, you know, you know, clean grip snatch, you know, all this, just a lot of stuff. So the heavy pulls and the heavy squats have great value, but what began to happen when the snatch, probably when the press was dropped in 72, a lot of great coaches began to notice that the carryover between the pulls and the squats just wasn't there. I wish I would have listened to the great Olympic lifter, Vasily Alexia, when he said that you should probably never squat more than 10 kilos, 22 pounds, over your best clean and jerk. Uh, once I moved to that formula, my legs felt better, my snap came back. Um, the heavy front squats, I had to do them because of the way I'm built, but once I did once I got my front squat to a, a certain level, just look up my article, Dead Stop Front Squats, and I give you all the information there. I never missed a, a, a clean recovery again. <sighs> Do we need the heavy, the, uh, the higher squats and the higher pulls as an Olympic lifter? Well, probably. Some. At 33, as an infantry officer in the, in the Army, no. <laughs> you don't. They do, you don't, okay? I hope that works. I hope that helps. And I want you to think about what I just said about they versus you. That's an important lesson to learn in, in our weight room. I'm going to make a note on this because I want to come back to this again. All right, my friend. Thank you so much, Andrew. And a great question. And let me know how you're doing on this. We have, um, we have a question. Um, uh, from Clayton, uh, I don't think I've ever a answered. I was wondering if you have any knowledge or came across any research in regards to a vasectomy's uh, effect on performance or longevity. Uh, I know a vasectomy is a very quick recovery, about eight days. Uh, I know that uh, that the vasectomy only stops certain kinds of things going into the uh, the ejaculate. Uh, I don't know. I know that certain other kinds of things, a much more uh, thorough uh, removal of the men's genitalia uh, has massive effects on uh, performance uh, and uh, uh, all kinds of other issues. But I don't think a vasectomy does. Here's the thing, Clayton. I simply don't know. I don't think it would. It would. 
um, it is possible to have an outstanding career as an athlete with a single testicle and a vasectomy is a much smaller intrusion, so to speak. And I know there's some people who are against any kind of this thing, but um, it is something that uh, uh, I don't fully know. Having said that, I don't think it would have any effects on performance. Um, I, I don't, I took your question very seriously because I think it is a serious question. Uh, and it's something uh, for me to think about. If anyone does have any information, please let me know. Um, now, there are going to be people who argue against any kind of physical intr intrusion in life. Um, I'd like to keep that moral and religious aspect out of this conversation, if possible. Thank you. We have a question from John. John says this, I've been a member of DJU for just over a year. It's really great. Thank you. I'm 64, 5'9", 166, and healthy, but I'm weak compared to athletes like you and others on DJU. My goal is to continue to be able to do normal stuff when I'm 80 or 90 years old. You know, we're about the same age. It's kind of funny because <clears throat> when I was young, I wanted to be have a healthy life at 64, 65. Now that I'm there, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's young. 85, 90. And when I get there, I'll be like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, when I'm older, you know, 120, 125, yeah. Uh, I wanna, he wants to walk the golf course and carry my clubs, get up off the floor, lift a suitcase overhead on a plane, lift a grandchild or even a great-grandchild. Good. I've been training with kettlebells for about 18 months, five days a week in the fall, winter, and spring, and two days in the summer when I golf. I do mobility. I like that. By the way, I like that a lot, folks. Do you, but, but let me stop right here. John, I like what you said here. So what John's does, John has said is he goes, he likes these activities this time of year. So when he's not doing, because of, because of weather, because when he, he can't do those activities, he does more lifting. When he gets back to his activity he likes, he backs off on the lifting, increases the activity. As simple as that sounds, it's absolutely profound because that's something that's been lost in the last couple decades. When I grew up, the off season is when you work for certain qualities. Um, in the sports I played, hypertrophy almost. You wanted to be bigger. In the preseason, it was power and speed, and then you <laughs> you played the game. Um, John is following almost that kind of template, and I like that. I do mobility training every day and a lot of walking. When I'm not golfing, I train on a spin bike. I've done a lot of running over the years, but not anymore because my knees don't enjoy running now. Oh, and, and you know, uh, honestly, John, this isn't a knock on running by any means, but uh, many people, many people find that running is just a difficult thing. If you live in the suburbs, if you live in the city, you're going to be running on concrete and asphalt, and that's just not friendly. Um, I'm sure if you ran... Uh, Every day on the beach, barefoot, your, you know, your, 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 your knees will be in a much happier place. Uh, in fact, there, that's what I want you to do, John. Set up a, a, a four month training with me in uh, Fiji, and every, and every day after I sleep in, we, I will watch you run on the beach. Okay. Um, after a bit of k kettlebells, I decided to do something different with kettlebells. Your humane burpee and armor building routines each once a week. I've been following that routine for three weeks and I feel my, like my push-pull muscles are getting weaker, which makes sense because the volume, uh, the armor building and the uh, humane burpee are, are cardiovascular HIIT workouts. They're armor building. They're, they, 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 they're there to beat you up. They're not there for uh, building up strength in the upper body. Should I keep on the humane burpee and armor building routine or should I try another program? I have only kettlebells, dumbbells, and a chin-up bar. I love kettlebells, but I've reached a plateau without further improving my strength. First, let me just tell you, you're doing great stuff. And, and, I, and I mean that and I salute you. A very simple thing to do, and you can even make this even more. How about this? 
pick a day and keep it away from your golf. Maybe the day after a good golf game. I don't know what day. And say like you're golfing three days a week. Um, you might have one that's more serious than the others. But let's just say you golf seriously on Sundays. Monday, week one, do the humane burpee. Now, be careful. Make sure you, you – because, you, you, you know, being outside golfing, you're outside a long time. There is some dehydration issues, uh, sunburn issues. Uh, I've got a son-in-law uh, who turns a little red when he plays. Um, week one, humane burpee. Week two, armor building. Week three, humane burpee. Week four, armor building. Your other weight workouts in the week, as appropriate, go back to a more traditional um, – you know, three sets of eight, three sets of 10, three sets of 12. You're at DJU, plug it in, do those workouts two to three times a week. Two is probably fine. Preferably, ideally, it'd be right after you got off the, off the links. I mean, to come home and before you shower, uh, get a get your three sets of eight and the, the push, the pull, the squat, uh, an appropriate hinge and suitcase carry, whatever it is, and your mobility work. Um Ideally, three days a week you would golf and do your kettlebells on the same day. And then the other four days uh, you would do your mobility work. I know that's hard to do, so you do what you can do, okay? John, I hope that helps. Gosh, that was a good question. Uh, the reason I called that a good question, gentle listener, is because you have someone who's got clear goals. You have someone who's thinking through issues, someone who's, you know, fighting the fight, but wants to be around long-term and is added something, saw the issues with it, and then needs a little bit of help. Those are my favorite kinds of questions. And if you have questions, remember, email them to us at podcast at danjohnuniversity.com. I'm here each and every week, happy to answer your questions. And until next time, let's all keep on lifting and learning.